how could I invite, um, ah, I'm not going to pronounce this correctly, I don't think, Siana, Siana Fitzjohn from Oil Free Autotahi regarding item 14, Council submission proposed block offer 2015. Welcome. Oh, hello, thank you very much, and I apologise for my slightly bedraggled um, appearance. I've biked from Burnside and it's raining cats and dogs out there. Um, so, kia ora to you all. My name is Siana Fitzjohn. I'm a geography graduate from Canterbury University, and today I'm representing our grassroots group, Oil Free Otsutahi. Um, we're part of a network of groups across the country opposing deep sea oil drilling. Um, so, ever since deep sea oil exploration began to be pursued a few years ago, We've witnessed a number of very worrying steps taken by our government to quell the opposition to deep sea oil exploration. So the first of which was the Anadarko Amendment. Uh, this limited our right to protest at sea within a certain amount, of, I think 500 metres of a seismic survey vessel or deep sea oil rig. Uh, the second one um, was passing a law to make all exploratory oil explore, all exploratory explorations a non-notified discretionary activity. Um, so this ensured that the public were excluded from the consultation process. We were unable to submit against proposed areas or launch formal opposition to those exploration areas. So these were very systematic attempts to shut down opposition and proceed with a fossil fuel agenda regardless of the public concerns. So the only parties now left that are being consulted are Iwi, Hapu and of course the local councils. So we would like to really commend the Council for opposing the 2015 oil and gas block offers. In particular, we really want to thank the Council for urging the Government to undertake broader public consultation on the issue. So your submission also highlighted the risks posed to our marine environment, our coastal communities' vulnerabil vulnerability in an oil spill, the proximity of the exploration areas to the marine mammal sanctuary. Um, so these are all really excellent reasons and we would like to slightly elaborate on those reasons and provide some further reasons why oil exploration will negatively impact Canterbury. So first of all, opening up these areas for oil and gas exploration exposes them to huge risks from offshore oil companies. Um, so these come in the form of seismic ocean blasting. So this is the first phase of oil exploration and it involves a 2D and a 3D survey. So these are massive sonic blasts that are being let out um, to penetrate the ocean floor and basically send back information of what lies beneath the surface. So this has the potential to cause physical harm to marine animals in, pro in close proximity to the survey vessel. Um, it can also damage cetaceans, which are whales and dolphins, by impacting their ability to use sonar to feed, navigate and communicate with one another. So very, is, very little is known about the full Im impacts of seismic surveying on, marine, on the marine environment. So we feel that there should have been rigorous studies undertaken and detailed impact assessment reports submitted before unprecedented areas of our ocean were opened up for seismic testing. Because there are now studies coming out um, to detail the harm done to marine mammals during this process. Um, also, opening up our coast to exploratory oil drilling um, obviously opens them up to the risks that something will go catastrophically wrong. So the more drill, drills that are competed, the completed the greatest statistical chance of a blowout. So as you mentioned in your submission, New Zealand is utterly unprepared to deal with an oil spill. Um, so our spill response at the moment consists of three vessels um, that are unfit for uh, any kind of action in open water. Um, a relief well would be weeks away because they'd have to bring it from somewhere else in the world. And the first line of defence uh, for New Zealand's oil spill is Corexit. So there are a number of problems with all of these defences. Um, first of all, in the Gulf of Mexico, they were in an area that had the highest concentration of relief wells in the world, and that took them months to block up that hole. Um, they also had thousands of response vessels, and they also used Corexic as a first line of defence, and that had massive implications for the community afterwards, because Corexic is, Corexit is a very toxic material, it's carcinogenic. It puts oil into the water column, which means you're unable to see it, but that doesn't mean that it's not having impacts upon the entire ecosystem. So either of these threats of an exploratory drill or seismic surveying um, is a severe threat to marine life. And we're actually nullifying the effects of having a marine mammal sanctuary on Banks Peninsula, um, because this sanctuary cannot prevent dolphins and whales from entering out of that sanctuary and entering into areas where they may be impacted by seismic surveying or drilling. 
Um, and of course, um, mammal sanctuary does not prevent oil traveling from any sort of spill event into the marine mammal sanctuary. Um, so these risks to our marine environment translate into severe economic risks to industries that rely on a healthy marine environment, um, such as tourism and fishing industries. Banks Peninsula and Akaroa are in particular very vulnerable to these economic effects. So deep sea oil drilling increases the economic vulnerability of those ocean reliant areas and it decreases the community resilience. So I went over to the Akaroa community um, to talk to some of the business owners there just to make them aware of what was going on. And I got the sense that a lot of them were very worried about, um, about what's happening because they realised that their economic and you know, their livelihoods strongly rely on a healthy and sound marine ecosystem uh, to continue that because of the tourism, the fisheries, um, and the fact that so many local residents from Christchurch and everything are going over and putting money into their community simply to enjoy and be around that pristine ecosystem. So oil exploration increases New Zealand's economic vulnerability in the event of a spill. So taxpayers are going to be largely liable for a cleanup. I think when Anadarko was drilling down here, they were, um, they were covered for about $30 million, which is negligible um, to the costs of an oil, cleaning up an oil spill. That would cost billions of dollars, and the taxpayer would have to front it. Um, not only that, we haven't really considered the severe ongoing economic losses after a major spill event. So in the Gulf of Mexico, it numbered into the billions of US dollars um, because they were basically having to cover the costs of loss to fisheries, loss to tourism, and those ecosystems will never recover. Um, I also wanted to mention that in 2010, 2011, Christchurch went through a massive upheaval. Um, obviously, communities are still dealing with the ongoing psychological and social impacts of that major disaster. Um, so residents already feel like their cultural her heritage has been lost, um, partly due to the loss of some of our culturally important buildings and because our voices have been to an extent shut down um, in the rebuild of Christchurch. So now we're opening up our coastlines to a very different kind of disaster, um, and this one is one that threatens our natural heritage. Um, so cities can be rebuilt, but ecosystems will never recover from a severe oil spill such as was seen in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, so Cantabrians value the ocean for, um, and the coastlines for food and recreation. Not only is there a strong economic reliance on the ocean, but there's also a very deep emotional connection and reliance as well. So the intrinsic value of our oceans and emotional connection isn't subject to easy analysis in an impact assessment report, for example. However, it's one of the most important things that we would be putting at risk by these operations. So the grief wrought by an oil spill on our coastal communities would be severe and it would be long lasting. And to be honest, I think Cantabrians have been through enough. Um, earthquakes are unavoidable, uh, but oil spills aren't. And there would be 100% avoidance of an oil spill if we were to disallow um, these operations to continue in our waters. So deep sea oil drilling also impacts our cultural identity. So I know that New Zealanders have a very strong sense of pride in our um, being an environmentally progressive nation. Um, and oil exploration off the coast makes us all inadvertent accomplices to an industry renowned for its abysmal environmental record. Um, the new oil and gas block offers demonstrate our government's commitment to a dying industry over its commitment to the wishes and wants and needs of New Zealanders. So finally, um, I wanted to touch on climate change, the elephant in the room. Um, it wasn't mentioned in the council's submission. Um, but it is, I think, something to be very severely considered um, in allowing our coast to be opened up to oil and gas exploration. Um, because reports coming out of the IPCC and the general scientific consensus worldwide is that we can only afford to burn 20% of known fuel reserves. That means leaving 80% of known reserves in the ground if we are to, vo to avoid runaway climate change. Um, and that's a conservative estimate, I'd imagine. So these... Oil exploration activities, they're not only reckless on a local scale because of the risks posed to our local environment, they're also reckless on a global scale um, because the impacts of climate change are only going to get worse and we're only going to see more severe ramifications worldwide. So as a New Zealander, I can't, um, you know, I can't ratify the, any kind of justification for exploring for more fuel reserves when we have neighbours in the Pacific Islands who stand to lose their home, home and culture due to sea level rise. We can't be out there exploring for more fuel reserves when we know that they are you know, subject to huge 
ramifications from climate change. Um, it's just immoral, really. Um, so New Zealand is fast becoming the final frontier for the fossil fuel industry. We're locking ourselves into a high emitting future. And we're foregoing a very lucrative green economy that we could, in theory, be transitioning to. Um, so this really makes us very unresilient to the changes that could be coming our way. So my generation will probably have to pay the brunt of our government's failure to prepare New Zealand for the impacts of climate change and prepare us for the global economic changes that we're going to see. Relying on the fossil fuel industry um, is just going to make us very vulnerable in the short term and long term. So in conclusion, I want to thank the Council for representing us when we've been silenced and ignored by our government. Um, oil exploration without consultation is insulting and it demonstrates a disregard for our community. I want to sincerely thank you for speaking out on behalf of Cantabrians and our environmental interests. It's obvious to us that you are sensitive to the needs of our community and our marine ecosystems. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And um, Oh, sorry, I should turn my microphone on. I've given that advice to everyone else and ignored it. Um, thank you very much for coming and making that submission. It's always good to um, you know, have that point of view. Um, I think that we have the ability to um, add uh, to our submission, um, so we might be able to, um, if, you, if you've got that in writing, um, yeah, yeah, it I might be quite useful if you, if, if you could forward that to us. I think Vicky's sort of kind of leading the yeah. way on the submission, okay. so um, if you could forward a, a copy to Councillor Buck, we'll make sure that the, um, that the uh, points that you've raised that haven't been raised in our submission are, are included as well, so that there is a voice to to what you've been able to present. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And now we have uh, Kathleen Gallagher.